By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at the second round of the Hill Giant Cup in the Netherlands Hilversum between the deck and blue, green, white, Arabian. And as I said, this is the second round. I've also put a first round match on and there's a link appearing right now. You can click on there to see the first round match. For now, we're looking at the deck player on the left and the green, uh, blue, white player on the right side. And we're seeing some good starts there. There's already a Sylvan library on the right and there is a time walk. It was hard to see, it went very fast, but there was a time walk from the, uh, the deck player. And the deck is always difficult because it has answers, so you have to kind of play uh, through the answers. And this is interesting, the opponent choosing to take two cards, or to take one card extra there, so two cards, paying four life, going to 16, and playing a Surrender Perfreet. Let's see if the deck has an answer. Didn't counter the Efreet. And also still no Disenchant for the Sylvan Library. Which is a very dangerous card when you uh, let your opponent play with it, when you keep it in on the battlefield. So there's again an extra card. So he's already drew two extra cards from that Sylvan, paid a total of eight lives, and including the damage from the Afri brings him to 11. Attacking the deck player for the first time, bringing him to 17, and look at that, there's an Urnum Jin. So Surrender Perfeed and Urnum Jin, and that's why I've called this deck Arabian, because it's just Arabian aggression with the Urnums and the Afrits in this deck. So there's another damage putting him down to 10 already, but he has all that muscle on the battlefield. So curious to see if he can swing in for seven, and he can actually bring the deck player down to 10, and you would expect a sword here or something else, but it's not coming yet. And there's an elf, which is interesting with that Pendlehaven, because he can pump it. And there's an Argovian Pixies, the antiquities green creature that has protection from artifacts. So this is quite interesting. There's so much pressure on the board. And I think if you're the deck player now, oh, and he's scooping. I wanted to say all that he needed here was a balance, but I saw no answers from the deck and that's very uncommon. So this is a blue a victory for the Arabian deck. So zero one, and we're going to game number two. And what a crazy start here from the deck player, starting with a Tundra and two Moxen into a Mind Twist. Uh, sorry, uh, not a Mind Twist, a Time Twister, uh, the blue power card, uh, meaning both players get to draw seven new cards and the deck player has the advantage here because he already has those two Moxen and Tundra on the battlefield and he has seven cards as well. Let's see if he can do something else with those new hand, new cards. But he's passing turn. And there's a Savannah passing turn again. Tundra. And there's a Tundra. And there is a Time Walk. So that means that the Arabian Knight deck can take another turn. Trying to get back here. Tapping three, playing a Surrender Perfreet. So that's a 3 4 flyer. And in the first game, we saw that the deck had trouble with getting up with answers, which is very strange. And let's see if, it, if the deck can succeed in this second game to finding the answers on time because these, this Arabian Night deck can get creatures on the board very quickly and is very aggressive. And I think that's a tactic as well, simply to overrun your opponent. And there's a red elemental blast. So that's the first answer from the deck coming from the sideboard, obviously. But there is an instant threat there. Threat number two on the board, an Urnum Jin. So after the Surrender Befreed, there's an Urnum Jin. And I wonder if there will be a counter spell here or a Swords of Plows here. We'll just have to wait and see. And there's a Swords of Plows here. So does mean that the uh, Arabian Knights player gets um, four life. And we've seen that Sylvan Library getting into action there in game one. So if he draws another one, it's basically a free card here that he's getting. But then he first needs the Sylvan, of course. And there's a factory from the side of the deck player. The factory is important tool when you play with the deck. And there's a planes, and there's another threat, there's another Urnum Jin. And they're so hard to kill in combat because they are 4-5. But of course it's not a problem for swords. Or a Chaos Orb. <laughs> so there's the Chaos Orb. 
There's the flip. I put it in slow mo, and it hits the Erningen. Bye bye Erningen. And so he has removed very successfully a surrender perfect and two Erningens. So it looks like he has answers to everything. And there's a strip activation or not? And he's stripping the mine, or the city of brass. Sorry. And there's a recall. So this is interesting. He's probably stripping the city of brass, denying the deck player from red mana to play a red elemental blast. Oops, but there's a counter spell. But it was well thought. I think uh, it's nice. Very smart. And there's a disenchant on that enchantment there, which can get the energy flux, which can get very annoying for the deck player. And there's a Chaos Orb, there's a flip, and that wasn't even close. So the flip missed here, and that's an expensive miss. Ouch, ouch, ouch. And I believe the Arabian Nights player is out of cards. So, ooh, that's not good when you're playing against a deck and your hand is empty and there are no threats on the board. And there's a Brain Geyser to make it even worse. So that's four extra cards for the deck player here. And this is starting to look dire for the Arabian Nights player. And there's a second factory, so that means four damage. At least one card in hand now. I mean, all you can hope for after that recall counter spell, because he really needed those three cards from the Ancestral Recall. Didn't happen though. There's an attack for four, bringing him down to 19, drawing a card. At least he has a blocker now. That's a Surrender Perfreed. Taking a damage, another Red Elemental Blast. Ooh, and those red elemental blasts is doing great work. There's almost always a target because this deck is just uh, his deck is full of blue creatures. There's another attack with the two factories. That's four damage and bring him down to fifteen. Two cards in hand now, passing turn. And that's a big difference, of course, when your opponent is able to resolve a brain geyser. Oh, and there's a sword supplies here. Bring the deck player back to twenty. Uh, what I wanted to say that it's such a difference when your opponent is able to successfully resolve a Brain Geyser for four cards and he counters your Ancestral Recall. But let's get back to the game. There's a uh, Urnum Jin now on the field. <laughs> and another answer. It's unbelievable. The Abyss. Oh, and there's so much creature hate now boarded in from the, by the deck player. Uh, obviously, the Abyss was already main board, but I'm talking about the two Red Elemental Blasts, or maybe even four. I don't know how many he boarded in. I guess four, because the Arabian Nights player is also playing with blue power, I believe. And, and that's just killing. There's another attack here. And there's a Disenchant. So if he cannot counter this Disenchant, then it could... Yep then maybe this could be a very long game. It's 20 life for the deck, 11 life for the Arabian Nights player, uh, with that Abyss on the field. And it shows you just how uh, important those factories are that the Arabian Nights player chooses to disenchant the factory. Knows that he doesn't have a lot of creature threats, Oh, and he even gets it back. So again, it was hard to see, but he plays a regrowth on his factory. Wow, so can you see how important these factories are? And there's a strip activation on the factory of the Arabian Nights player. Coming in for two there. So he's on nine, and there's another factory pumping him now. Going to six life. So this is going to be difficult. How can he win from this? Playing an Elf, at least having one blocker. Probably have to chump block. But then again, you also have the Abyss. And, there, <laughs> and I believe there is a, um, a Swords there. Meaning he goes to 7 and takes 4. So he ends up at 3 life. And that's the game. So game number 2 has been won by the deck player, that means 1-1. One, one. And we are moving on to the decisive third game. And I think the big difference between game number one and number two is that in game one, the deck had no answers. And in game two, the deck was the deck and had all the answers. So let's see what's gonna happen next. Are we gonna kind of see a middle situation here? And there's a library of Alexandria from the deck player. So obviously, 
that's work to do when you're the opponent. But there's also a Sylvan library also letting him select his cards and draw extra cards. But there is a big difference because he has to pay for life there. There's a Mox Ruby and a Tundra edit. And he's taking an extra card, going down to 16, and playing a Surrender Perfreet. So there's some pressure on the table. But with the Library of Alexandria, the deck player can draw extra cards, meaning extra solutions. And there's the first solution, the, um, uh, the Sword Supplies So bringing the other player back to 19, and it's almost like he, he gets a card back because of that Sylvan Library. So basically the Sylvan now only costs one life because he just gained three life. And he's actually taking two extra cards here. So that's interesting, going to 11. I think his tactic is just to get as many creatures out as possible, uh, knowing that with the Library of Alexandria online, he has to find a way to kind of force him to play cards, emptying his hand. And again, he gains life now, so he's kind of earning the life that he pays for the, drawing the cards back through these sorts to plowsiers because this was four life taking care of that urn and gin so that means an extra card added and there's a strip mine losing a mana and i'm pretty sure he's going to take another card he just gained four life and you know you're playing against the deck so the deck is not very aggressive and he is he's drawing one extra card going to 11 playing a forest Tapping, is there another Urnum Jin? And there's another Urnum Jin. We've seen a lot of those Urnum Jins. And there's a counter spell. And that feels so unfair that you can activate the library or the or the book or whatever and then still counter spell. Then again, it does make it interesting as well in some situations. But again, an answer, and there's that dreaded factory. So that could start eating away from his life total next turn. So deck player seems to have it pretty much under control. Again paying for life here. And I like this. I mean, you have to do something. You have to do something against an aggressive library. And you have to try to, to force something here. And there's a Whirling Dervish and a Surrender Perfreet. So again, putting pressure on the table and kind of challenging the deck player to come up with solutions. Okay, here are the problems and you find the solutions. But so far, finding the solutions haven't been very difficult for the deck player with that active library and this was a power sink taking care of that surrender free and there's a second factory mishers factories beautiful winter factories and now he's on seven and now you have to start counting because you know he can swing in for three as well if he takes care of the world or for four actually uh oh this is interesting there is a maze of if and now he attacks with his whirling dervish Again, not afraid to take the initiative. I mean, he's on seven and he chooses to attack. I like it. And there is a block. But there is a disenchant and there's a counter spell on the disenchant. And there's another disenchant on the other. Oh, this is so interesting. So there's another disenchant, a disenchant, counter spell, another sword. Anyway. When everything has cleared, the Dervish has been, been blocked, but no damage has been dealt because of the Disenchant or Swords or whatever factory it was, and no factories are... Um, oh, I'm, I'm, okay, I guess the Dervish has dealt the damage, gaining a counter, and all the factories are gone. So that was interesting to see. A little bit of a counter war, war there, and all the factories are gone. The deck player is comfortably on 22 lives. Playing another factory. Oh, man. And that's also a little bit of bad luck here for the Arabian Nights player that the opponent finds so many, many factories. And again, there's an answer. There's a mana drain on that recall. And again, he, he cannot activate... Um, successfully activate the recall because in game two we also saw that the recall got countered i believe by a red elemental blast there was an attack from the dervish a block and in response a maze of if and again we see this difference in game two we saw the brain guys are getting resolved by the deck player and now we see the ancestral recall getting resolved by the deck player and and that is just pure card advantage and add that up with the uh, Library of Alexander, which is probably now active again. Yes, it is. He's tapping it. You can see it there in the corner. It's very hard to see, but he's drawing another card. 
and he just has so much card advantage. So despite the very aggressive use of the Sylvan Library uh, by the Arabian Nights player, we just see the deck drawing even more cards, and there's a Chaos Orb, and will there be a flip as well on the Sylvan? I wonder... And yeah, there's a the flip. And it makes sense because you just want to have control over the game. And there is a hit. And the Sylvan Library is gone. But it's not over yet because look at that board state. More and more creatures coming. And there's a double swing here by the Dervishes. But <laughs> the double swords. And that's just... I mean, that's the story of this game, uh, of this game number three here. So many cards equals so many answers for the deck player. And that is the problem. Not the, not the threats being played out, but the answers. Um, and again, I'm, I'm impressed with how many answers the uh, Arabian Nights player can come up with. Let's see what's going to happen here. 22 against 10. Again, he's drawing that extra card from the library. And where is an Ice Storm if you need one? Or are there any Ice Storms in this deck, actually? I don't know. I haven't seen any. Um, it looks like a factory activation or not. There's another Sylvan. That's nice. And no counter spell. That kind of surprises me with so many cards in hand. And there's an underground sea. Passing turn there. And looking at his top three cards, making a pick. You're on 10, so it's risky to draw that extra card. And there's an attack with the factories. Knowing that you can use the Maze of If to take a factory out of combat, it's actually very useful. And he's just taking the damage. Maybe afraid that there is a disenchant in the hand there. Passing turn. And it looks like that, you know, there might be an opportunity for the Arabian Nights deck player to come back then again. I mean, he has a whole handful of spells, so. There's another activation. There's a disenchant, so there's one of the answers. Taking him out of combat with the mace to pump him once more. Dealing three damage, bring him back to 15. And that mace of if, it's, you can do so many fun things with that mace of if. It always surprised me. He's counting his cards. That's not a good sign. Is there a fireball coming? Counting again. Oh, there's an earthquake. Earthquake of 10. And there is a swords to plows here. It's nice. So he ends up on one life. And the deck player on five life. And this is interesting. Because now, actually, I mean, if he can play a, a threat or something. I mean, he has that maze of if to, to keep that factory to keep him safe from the factory from the deck player. So if he can now find some pressure, a giant growth. I don't think he plays with giant growths, but a giant growth would actually be decisive here. And there's a balance. Interesting. And that means he loses his hand. Well played. And this is quite interesting now. And all of a sudden, I feel the Arabian Knights player has an advantage here. And it's just three against one. Oh, and there's a fireball. And that is bad luck because I kind of felt that the Arabian Nights player did so much and did everything right playing against that active Library of Alexandria. A very entertaining games. Thank you for this match. If you would like to see more games from the Hill Giant Cup, please keep an eye on the channel because I will be posting more. This was just the second round and I've already posted the first round. You can click on the play playlist that you see right now. Uh, to see the previous game and I will be uh, posting the third round the fourth round the fifth and so on all the way to the finals for now thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks the channel where we talk old school magic <laughs>